Hi, welcome to Teachers Tech. My name is Jamie and it's great to have you here. Today I want to show you five tips in Google Docs that you may not know about. Tip number one is about separating images from the document. So you can see in this document right here, I have three different images. Well, let's say if somebody uh, gave me this document and it was for a website and was posting it, maybe I was copying, pasting it over. I don't want the images inside of this. I want to have them separated and I just don't want to copy paste them out. It's not going to work that way. I want to have them as a J JPEG. So what I can do in this case is just go up to file here and now if we look at download what you can do is download it as a web page and you're probably wondering why would this help you out now i'm just going to go and it zipped this up for me so i'm just going to go ahead and extract this so i'm just going to go open and what you're going to notice now inside i have another folder called images uh, so if I click on that, those three images are right there. So if I click on uh, them and open them, I get them individually. So you can have them separated if you download it as a web page and then you have that images folder. So you can simply take out all the folders out of a Google Docs document like that. In tip number two, I want to show you how you can force a copy. So you could send a person a link, they click on the link, and it's automatically going to create a copy of your document without them having to do anything. Uh, so you could normally share your document. So you do have to share it either way. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit share on this and go to anyone with the link. Now, normally, if you did this and sent the link, a person could get this and they could just go up and go file and make a copy. Uh, but to get rid of that step there, what we can do, go up to the URL right here. So see where it says edit? I'm going to just change this to copy just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy. So I'm going to go control C on this and copy this. And now I can go paste this in an email if I wanted to do it and just send it uh, to somebody and paste it and they click on the link. So let me hop over to a different browser with a different Gmail here. If I go ahead and paste that link in now and just hit enter, notice that it comes up with this. And at this point I can hit make a copy and that person will know right away because sometimes if you're sharing a document, people might not know how to make a copy. So I wanted to share that tip about forcing a copy. And other thing, you can do this with Google Slides, Google Sheets as well. So for this next tip, tip number three, I want to show you can, how you can open up a PDF and make edits to it using Google Docs. Now to do this, you're going to have to put your PDF file inside Google Drive. So I'm just going to switch over to my Google Drive right here. Now at this point, what I can do is right click. So this is just a PDF right here that I have a very simple one. And I will say if they're complex uh, PDFs with lots of graphics, then I, it won't uh, transfer it over quite that great. But I'm going to go ahead and just right click on this one. And if you go open, open with Google Docs. So if you have a PDF inside your, your drive, try to open it with Google Docs. And then you're going to see that it goes over to here just like this. So it becomes a Google Docs document here that you can make edits to. So try that with some PDFs from your Google Drive open with Google Docs. So tip number four is about using voice typing. Well, not necessarily about using voice typing. It's about all the different commands that are overlooked that you can do in voice typing. Voice typing is just not a dictation tool. You can format documents, you can insert tables and do so much more. But let's go ahead and insert, or sorry, open it in tools. So if I go to tools and open up voice typing here, and you can see there is a shortcut. I'm going to pop this open. Now we can move this to where we would like to put it. We can select our language, but let's go ahead and just start talking. So I know it's, if I talk slower, it's going to work better and try to talk clear. So I hope everybody is having a great day today, period. Notice I can add punctuation as I go through this, period. How is your day today? Question mark. I hope it was great exclamation mark new paragraph insert table insert new column stop listening 
So notice I just turned it off with a few commands. I inserted a table. I put a new paragraph in. I can even move around in different places. I could highlight. So even if I was going to a different spot, if I say the word highlight first or bold, it will do this. So if I turn this back on, bold, how are you today? Bold, how are you? Stop listening. So you notice it does, sometimes I talked a little fast and then it wasn't ready to, to get what I was going to do when I wanted to have it bold. But I just want to show you, it's not perfect. It will make some mistakes. You can see up top, the top there, it didn't have the capital uh, with how as well. But what I want to show you, if we hover over this, go to this question mark right here. And if I click on it, it's going to open up the help for this and take a look at all the different things you can do. If I scroll down, you can see it goes through and gives you some tips and everything on it. But what I want to show you, uh, use voice commands. And we could do this to select our text. Look at this long list. So it does take practice with this. We could format our document. We can do all these different things with so alignment, adding columns, lists, bulleted list. We can edit our document. I'm not going to go through all these. You can see I used the add table. I stopped my voice here. I, you can move around. So take a look at all the different things that you can do in Google's voice typing because it's a lot more than just dictation. So my last tip is making sure that you know about the power of using headings to have an outline or make it easy to insert a table of contents into your Google Docs. So what I mean is, so right now, this is just normal text right up here. But what I'm gonna do is go up and I'm gonna just change this here. So let's uh, go and change this to a different type. We could go heading one or heading two. I'm gonna make this heading uh, one right here. Uh, and then what I want to point out is if we go show document outline, notice that it's right here. So if I go ahead and I'm just going to go to this one and highlight and let's change this one to another heading and we'll add our last one here. So if we go to this one and we'll make this a heading two. So we have three different headings. Now you could be putting heading twos and everything to fit under uh, different points too, but it helps you navigate your document now with these. So the other thing it can do is we can, once we have, if we're using these headings, we can go ahead and insert, if we look at the very bottom of this, a table of contents here. So with links or without the links. So if you wanted with the links, we could insert it in and it inserts this. So this goes right into the document, uh, but we could be setting that up here as a table of contents. So I want to point to that point that out because I see a lot of people when they're doing this, they might make this larger and turn into a larger font, but they're not taking advantage of headings and what it can do to help navigate, especially if you have longer documents and then it allows you to insert that table of contents very easily. So I hope you like these five tips. These are five tips that I find that people overlook or maybe not sure that they're there or not. I'd really love to hear some more tips from you about Google Docs or other Google products. Just write them down in the comments. I hope you had a good time watching this this week. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.